And here we are at the underground reservoir. I guess this level, this game's underground cavern, if you will. Um, I, I really enjoy this place um, for the biggest fact that most... Uh, actually, this this area, if you look how big of an empty space we still have, this is actually like a secondary hub world, in my opinion. There are a lot of different worlds that are connected to this place in this, um, in this game, in this underground reservoir. And uh, the music's also very fun. But uh, let's use Undyne and see if we can find something special here. Alright! <laughs> Good start. Good start, great start! <sighs> Fuck it, bitches! Jesus. Alright. And what do we get? Open robe, nice. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be any better than anything. Oh, it's it's armor. Okay, yeah, we don't want that shit. Back to uh, well, we can use Scala actually because we need to be underwater anyway. Here we go. Now this, like I said, you actually could enter all the way up to the Tasty Meat area right here uh, at the very beginning of the game, which is why the enemies aren't tough. But as soon as you get down here, you need Scala. So what I like is that as soon as you go underneath this transition, we're going to see the enemies change in difficulty very quickly and in, in uh, variety types. So now we're in a water-type area, and now that we have the armor of water, well, that is really good for us. So let us venture down into the underground reservoir. I really like this area um, due to the fact that it has kind of like, I don't know, MC Escher looking type of backgrounds and stuff. And like, look at these enemies. We got a man-eater. A lot different than the uh, plant-like creature we usually fight. And uh, I don't know why the frame rate is horrendous underwater. Jesus Christ. It's almost, it's just ridiculous about. Oh, God, man. Jesus. I hope it's not like the entire reservoir. It's going to be kind of hard to play. I hate that. It kind of ruins the experience a little bit. But sometimes you can't really uh, help that. But it's okay, we got Rahab Sword. An Ice type? Okay, cool, an Ice, uh... Yeah, nice, an Ice Sword. Except the problem with the Ice Sword is that uh, we're in a water type area, so obviously Ice is gonna be kind of weak against these enemies. At least I would think so. I'm probably wrong, but um... Maybe it's just Man Eater, Man Eater, we'll call it Slow Eater. You're now called Slow Eater. <laughs> oh well. Ah, those are horrible enemies to fight. I just, well, luckily a lot of the underground reservoir actually is not, like, submerged underwater combat, luckily. This is just kind of get into the area. We're still not really there, in my opinion. Here we go. Now you can see it kind of looks like more like the cavern, but it's like a lot more misty. You can, I think the way they did this light blue effect in this game makes it seem like it's a more of a misty type area, so. I guess we'll just continue on for to, um... Ooh, Dead Crusader. Don't mind if I do. I'm going to get back out that, um, uh, Ghost Dancer. Well, well maybe Headhunter? Uh, Headhunter is not that good either. I would like another Lux type move. Oh, wow. This guy sucks. Yeah. Alright, as you can see, our Ascalon is doing very well here. Really taking names in these, um, these enemies. Although, it's crazy. If you didn't afford this, these enemies would take a lot longer to kill, like the Maneater for one. So, I guess we're not using the, our Ghost Dancer too much. There we go. We, we started to get our water-based... Um, and what I like about the water-based enemies, and what I like about the Needles, is that when it explodes the Shrapnel, that Shrapnel also does damage. So, we're talking a lot of stack damage really quick. And we're about to get Fish Head. <laughs> fish Head is actually a really good move. If you look, uh, Fish Head, even though the name sounds like kind of important, just a pure fireball attack. It's kind of nice to use, but I'm really liking Needles when underwater because of all the shrapnel uh, extra damage you can do. So let's head up to the this area here. Oh, see, we need a lot of different um, soul switching, and I really wish that they made like a, uh, like a secondary set you could use in games higher up from this game. They do. And that's nice, <laughs> but um, until then, 
I guess we're just gonna have to keep switching around, but they don't do it too much in this game. At least I don't think they do. At least they shouldn't. Let me check over here quick. Ooh, nice! Super Potion! That's full hit points. Very nice. His needles work so beautifully under here. That's why I'm happy I got them uh, when I did in the Clock Tower. That's a nice preemptive uh, soul to have in here. But yeah, like I said, the, the way that the environment, the varying environments in this game, as you can see, like the Clock Tower, I guess, isn't that large of an area, and they're not gigantic areas. But you just feel like you don't need a second castle by the time you're done with this, this game. And like I said, even though we really don't have the super much amount of areas left, there's still plenty of areas to go around. And like I said, the underground reservoir has so many different areas connecting to it. Um, oh, I guess actually it only has like two areas connecting to it, but still. It seems like a lot, and, it, and it's a very gigantic area. Yeah, I think it's just that room, that man-eater wants to slow down everything. Well, that's a good to know. I'm always afraid about that when I play the DS games, there's going to be some immense slowdown, because DS emulation is still not perfect, and uh, can be pretty bad. But I appreciate the fact that I can play DS on my computer. And I own all the Castlevania DS games, so uh, I find it morally okay to do. Not that I wouldn't do it anyway. <laughs> well, DS maybe, I don't know. But that's neither there. Oh shit! Okay, it'd be nice if we could. We could swim up that. I don't know if we can swim up that waterfall or not. I like this way this waterfall looks though. There's not that many like that in the game. And then we got these spawning boat areas, which I get it start to get a little weird, um, a little bit strange. But um, I'd rather continue a little bit further to the right before I um, explore this area too much further. Okay. There we go, got a little, uh, nice little, uh, <laughs> new enemy. And he poisoned me with a little slime attack, jerk. If we don't have a save point soon, I'm gonna have to force myself to use one of my, uh, precious potions. Pretty, pretty soon, actually. I'm not gonna die, that's for damn sure. I just thought maybe I'd run into a save point at some point here. Nope. Oh, you don't hurt anymore. But yeah, like I said, I'm not sure what everything does, what actually does water damage in this game, but uh, hey, killer fish. I think something appears here later, later, but it's also a really easy way to get a uh, killer fish um, soul in this game. Right there. Okay, I'm cutting it close. Let's, uh, I'm gonna use a potion. Just one's good enough, there you go. I got these spawning oons. A little annoying. Get out of here, Jesus! You're slowing my game down, man. All right. Oh, I have, I have. Uh, there's like, a, I don't know, like some sort of like kids. There's a lot of kids upstairs, and I, I, I think our neighbor has some sort of like pseudo daycare. I think they're dealing drugs, to be honest. But some sort of pseudo daycare. Oh, nice. And um, they bring up kids up there, and I swear, whoa, uh, those kids stomp around on the upper floor and they just shake everything and make all these stud sounds. That's what those stud sounds you might hear. I just want to bring that up. I can't really do anything about it. Um, I personally uh, detest and loathe those children up there. Not all children, but those children. <laughs> Bastards. Alright. <laughs> anyway. I wanted to say that. <laughs> I feel better that I said that. Um, not to explain the noise, but just my, to, to publicly explain my detest. Now look at that thing shooting by. Maybe if we have some sort of way to slow down time, we can catch that. But for now... Oh, look! It's the next boss! So we fought almost all of the regular enemy bosses. The bosses that are reoccurring. So any boss that doesn't give your soul pretty much can uh, reoccur. It's pretty cool. Let's try the slime ball. See how that works. I think that's actually a pretty good move. I can't remember, though. Oh, yeah! Oh, my gosh! It bounces and rebounds. It's like a rebound stone. And it stacks. Yikes. That's beautiful. And uh, as you can see, that was kind of like the introduction to a new cavish, caver cavernous area. And we got another chance for disc armor. Very nice. And not so. But um, I think before we go too far in this really beautiful, luminous cavern, the way that it should have been, with a little ice and uh, actual luminous looking background, we're going to head back up to that place where that boat was being spawned, because we want to go too far down here until, uh, until then. So, yeah. 
All right, we're back to the materializing boats, and uh, this is not a Sharon type uh, river ride. This is a uh, underground reservoir reservoir river, river ride. So a little bit of a gimmick here, but if we're fast enough, we can try to make up to these platforms. Although I don't think this one's as important. Nope. But I think there's a, a chance to get something special if you ride the boat uh, at the right trajectory and get somewhere. So like I said, so first we got the kind of like the luminous cavern area, then we got like this kind of like underground aqueduct looking place. So they kind of like hit both places instead of just doing, uh, you know, all separate areas. It's just one big underground reservoir. So, um, and keep in mind that we're always, we're always levitating, suspended in this, um, solar eclipse. So it's actually kind of cool to think about too. Oh, look at that! A new sword! And it looks like we need to do a boat ride to get there. So, uh, let's do just that. At any point you want to materialize, Mr. Boat, I would appreciate it. Hm. There we go. Took a while. Alright, let's get the sword. Ah, uh, I think we're gonna need flying armor for this. Or we just don't need a boat at all. <laughs> okay, that works. Actually, I don't know if we still can get this thing. We're gonna have to really try. Hiya, hiya, and we got it. Milliken sword, a sword that can turn enemies into stone. Another cool uh, bastard sword size weapon, but. Just can't beat the dragon slaying Ascalon just yet. Oh, hello. There's cool looking enemies here, but um, it looks like if we go left one more room, we would lead to a connector that would lead us back to the beginning of the game where we got the flying armor. And so that's actually another way to enter the reservoir. So there's actually two different points of entry when you first enter. Nice! Summon nightmares to use his weapon, and it's not nightmares as, as in a bad dream. We're talking about the physical nightmare horse. That is a sweet, sweet weapon. I like it. It's even better than the slime ball now. Look at all these different type of golems. That's kind of like the way they do different armors. They don't they don't go as crazy with this with like the armor types. I think that was kind of like an excuse just to do palette swap, especially in Circle of the Moon standpoint. But uh. This is fun. I like having this uh, demonic aura death horse. Here we go. This is what I was remembering. All right, let's see if we can do it without flying armor to help us out. Oh, wait. Okay. Come on. Oh, shit. Oh, I missed it. Damn it. Well, we'll try again later. Until then. Oh, 278 damage. This has to be doing fire damage, something that they're uh, weak against, because that is fantastic. And look at that! A handgun! And it looks like by the way the background is, and I like how they do two different backgrounds in the same area. That's actually pretty impressive how they did that. Um, well, at least in terms of Castlevania standpoint. So, it looks like we need to, we need to uh, come in from the cave area to get that. So this is just a dead end, unless we can make this boat rise. So let's try that again. Alright. Hooah! Gotcha! What do we got? Oh, back in here. Oops. Oh my god! Nightmare, you're amazing! And we find another area of the Luminous Cavern um, variety. So I think uh, I'm going to head up here quick so I don't um, rule any areas out. This is pretty much the final part of the underground aqueduct looking area, as far as I can tell. And uh, I like covering my bases so I don't miss anything important. Oh, look at that, an arc demon! Whoa! Did I kill you? Yeah, I guess I did. Yikes, man. Holy shit. <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting your soul, but pretty rare, so we're not going to try for it. I wonder if that purple slime does anything different. It might. Alright, time to head into the purple luminous caverns. And uh, this might be the first part or first part of the Let's Play where I can't just do a, uh, ser a part versus uh, what section we're in. Because, like I said, the luminous cavern is huge. And look at these cool platforms. I mean, like, everything's so unique and special here. It looks like we're going back into the actual castle area. 
Because keep in mind, in my opinion, we're not really in the castle design. This is just the caverns below. Like the ancient caverns below. Oh, look at this. A book. Summoning Tome. Ancient Book 3. So there's, there's, there's been two ones before it, apparently. Well, what's the ancient book say? Ancient Book 3. The third spirit is a beautiful nightmare. I have a nightmare, and it's beautiful in my eyes, although I don't think it's the nightmare they're talking about. The third spirit. I'm not really sure what that means just yet, but maybe if we find the other two, it will uh, make sense. So until then, we'll keep that in mind. Nightmare! Oh my gosh, that does so much damage. That's so nice. What we got here? Another present for us. This is like a dead end again. But it was worth for an ancient book. Because... If you never played this game, you do need those ancient books to get to the real last area, which I love how they do that. You can get to a fake area, then a last area. Thank you, Sifi the Knight, for starting that. Uh, well, for at least... No breakable wall? Wow, that really looks like it. For starting that trend, Sifi the Knight, I appreciate it. Get out of here. Eight damage. Piss off. Man, this place is huge, I told you. I told you, man. <laughs> So many connectors. Oh, hey there. Little random caterpillar underwater. Okay. I believe the giant worm has a pretty unique, nifty soul, but uh, we're not going to try for it. And we got the rune ring. That sounds really good. We might actually get rid of our lucky ring if it's really good. Better defense and increases the rate at which MP is restored. Goodbye, three luck. That's beautiful. Now, it may not really look like it's doing much, but remember, having a lot of magic is kind of overpowered. So let's try one more shot at that soul. Alright. That's pretty nice. We can use The more that we can use Nightmare, the better, because that is going to be the soul of choice. That's probably better than the Disc Armor now. I'm happy about that. As you can see, Scala is pretty damn important for this, uh... <laughs> for this area. You really do need it. But what I like is that until this point, you kind of just go through the castle in order, going left and right, going you know left and right, forward as the paths take you. You might get one soul here and there, and you have to go to a certain spot. But now that we're finally down under here, there's so much more areas to explore. And look at that, breakable wall, nice. It had to be something. What is this? Osafoon. A little bit weaker, but a sword with a very long blade. Wow, look how much range it's got. I prefer the damage, thanks. That damage is just too much to pass up. Still, it is considerable. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Fish Head. Freaking nightmare, man. That was a beautiful soul. Gosh. Woo! Alright. Got plenty of money, I guess we might try to save up for that Soul Eater Ring. Not that it won't be very important by the time we have enough money for that. Ugh. Okay, so good. We're really getting these connections down. I like it. We really are really closing off. Very nice. Okay, so where are we at? Looks like we're at the uh, head of a waterfall. Uh, we got Super Potion as a reward, but... It's weird that this little area, that there's no music. It must be kind of a special place. We'll have to loop around. So I guess uh, I'll fill in that one little connector map to make sure that's where it leads. And then we're going to start back to where we started here uh, by that save point. Alright, back to the Luminous Cavern. The real time. Let's uh, explore the rest of this underground reservoir. So that whole part was kind of unessential, really. A few connections here and there, and we saw a glimpse of a handgun. But other than that, uh, we're... Um, Ready to explore. This is kind of the area that actually is going to link to where we need to go. And these disc armors, man. These disc armors. Thanks for that. Usually I like when you get a soul when you level up. Kind of feels like it's more, it's more, it happens more often. Like you get a better chance to get it if you kill an enemy when you level up. Although I'm pretty sure that's just pseudo effect. Placebo. Still, it's nice to think about it. <laughs> and it's such a very cool when it happens. Alright. Let's uh, go right. Yeah, that's Mandragora for you. Want to show what it actually looked like. Pretty dangerous. Oh god. Something tells me this is not a very uh, happy room. But we got Mermen. Mermen are 
just like the beginning of the game. They only do one damage. You're weak. Unlike this guy, who isn't that much stronger, really, compared to us. But I wonder what he says when he gets stoned in Japanese. Kind of curious. Anybody know? Hey, slow down, slow down, eater. Take this. I'm pretty sure in some place, maybe the boss rush mode of this game, that man eater is actually a boss. They actually include him. Armor of Water. Well, we had to buy it, but we got it a little earlier, so now we can sell it. I liked getting it earlier, so, you know, water-based tribute attack, which is pretty much a lot of things in this area, don't hurt as bad. And I want to fight this Arc Demon again, because that's experience, and I would love that soul, because that guy looks awesome. This is a... S oh, shit! That could have been bad. <laughs> Whoa! Excuse you. Man, Golden Deuce is in here. Very random. Don't like it. Can't really beat that flying armor, though. Man, that's a nice... That has always been a nice, uh, transversing ability. Alright, let me up. Damn it! <gasps> Alright. <laughs> okay. What we got? One single room. I like it. Hey, I really like that. Shit. I would go back to Hammer, but I really don't think he updates his inventory ever again, and if he does, it's definitely not now, or already. Pretty sure Ascalon is the best sword you can buy from him. Could be wrong, though, and I hope I am. Oh, this little, little piece of shit. <laughs> Dry as. Uh, I got Nightmare for you, buddy. Pretty rare enemies, though, like Poison Worm and that Giant Worm. Look like the only times you can see those guys. I'm almost certain about that. Oh, no music, and look! Wow, this must be a really big place if it connects to that area up there. So look at that, you see that symbol up there? It looks like some sort of like geisha looking enemy. That looks like the Curly and Durgas we fought before. Hmm, interesting, something to keep in mind. And what's that right there? No way to really tell. And finally, crazy piece of armor, it looks like a spacesuit. And uh, some really, really strong spiritual waterfall force here. We're not getting through that. We need to be able to go really fast if we're going to hope to ever get past there. Hmm. Looks like it's about all we can do in here for now. Let's have, if we can fly, maybe we'll check that out later. Secret and interesting. Alright, only real one place to go here, other than all the way back up there, and that connected to the left, I guess. Plenty of places to go, I love it. Oh, Gorgons! That's cool. Gorgons are randomly sitting in the cave, and we saw that big, fast sprite again. Interesting. Yeah, so many variety of enemies, man, when you get down here. It's like a whole different world, like I said. You can tell- it's not like, oh, this is the underground area. No, this is like the underground hub area, like I've been saying. It's just crazy. Love it. Oh, okay. Well, I lied. <laughs> Still, pretty rare enemies. Get out of here. Get oh, hey! Super mana, mana prism, it looks like. Wouldn't mind that. Uh, looks like we have to go higher up to get that. Not worried about it. Okay. We're at really low now. Yikes. Really, really, really low in the uh, cavern. We're definitely getting somewhere. We gotta be, right? Hey. You go back, bitch. Gargoyle, I guess the yeah, palace swap of the gremlin. The palace swap it can be okay if you don't do if you don't abuse it too much. Totally fine. And nice. Ooh, looks delicious. Pudding. Looks like a pretty expensive pudding. I bet it heals a lot of uh, HP. Something tells me. The underground cemetery, a sub area of this area. Interesting. We're definitely getting somewhere. Look how freaking... We're so far underground, it's ridiculous. Underground cemetery, submerged underneath the lake. Oh, look at this guy, Flame Demon. Holy crap. Nope. Nice! <laughs> First hit. Burns enemies to a crisp with ultra-hot flames. Flame Demon. Beautiful. Let's see what we got. Ooh. Doesn't that look kind of familiar? Sort of like Dracula's Hellfire? Pretty damn similar, man. I'm thinking I'm gonna try to this and so. Although that nightmare is hard to beat, though. 
Look at this, man. Where are we headed to? Alright. Something tells me we're going to a uh, much special, more unholy place, so let's venture forth.